Your Eminence, Archbiscop, Ambassadors, Lord Sips, Regional Governor, High Commissioner of Cyprus, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an extraordinary event of discovering and celebration. My name is Andriana Manetta. I'm communicator and marketing strategist, currently working as a marketing director of Hanson Robotics, an AI robotic leader company worldwide. And tonight, I'm going to be your presenter for this enchanting event. Tonight, we gather to, to immerse ourselves in captivating allure and stored heritage of the North Aegean Islands, Lesbos, Hios, Samos, Limnos, and Icaria. With deep reverence for the culture, history, and traditions of the North Aegean, we invite you to embark on a journey that embraces the limitless possibilities for, of the future with open minds and outward perspectives. Each year, the PBA initiative aims to transfer boundaries featuring the distinguished speakers and exceptional initiatives that elevate thought and intellect. We unite values, projects, historical legacies, and innovative ideas through captivating visions and tangible actions, encompassing cultural and sporting events, developmental islands, and opinions shared and analyzed by international figures from literature, Can I have your attention, please, before I keep going? <laughs> right. So each year, the PBA initiative aims to transfer boundaries, featuring these uh, sequences, speakers, and exceptional initiatives that elevate thought and intellect. We unite values, projects, historical legacies, and innovative ideas through captivating visions and tangible actions, encompassing cultural and sporting events, developmental eye scenes, and opinions shared and analyzed by international figures from literature, arts, science, business, and academia. Tonight, let us come together to celebrate the timeless allure of the North Aegean Islands. Immerse yourself in the soul-steering melodies of Greek music performed by the renowned band Rebetiko. And now, please join me in a warmly welcoming the esteemed Regional Commissioner of the North Aegean, Konstantinos Mujuris. Tonight's celebration reflects his invaluable support and visionary leadership. Let's give a resounding round of applause of, to Commissioner Mujuris and to the unforgettable experiences that await us this evening. Your Eminence, Your Excellency, Your Lordships, ladies and gentlemen, I would like on behalf of the region of North Aegean Islands to welcome you here. I am really inundated by but what I see. I couldn't expect that we would have such a world here. So many people here. I really thank you for coming and I really feel proud that my wife has been able to organize all this. Bravo, Dimitra. Well, what is North Aegean region, islands region? It's one of the 13 regions divided Greece. Greece is divided into 13 regions. One of them is the North Aegean islands. They include 10 islands inhabited. The main islands is Lesbos, well known for other reasons. Uh, Hios, well known for IMO reasons. <laughs> Samos, for people who drink the wine of Samos, they know. Limnos and Dicaria are the main five islands of the ten. 
history, a lot of history. For 3,500 years to 5,000, these islands are making history. I could mention a lot of historical names. I could start from Lesbos, from the famous poet of Sappho, who wrote homosexual poems some six centuries before Christ. I can cite Pitakos. I can mention Arion, Theophrastus. If I pass to Hios next island, you will be surprised to know that Homer comes from Hios. There is a stone there, a big rock, called the Scalopetra, dedicated to his writings. If we go to the next island, Samos, you will meet Pythagoras. And I will not ask you to Pythagorean theorem. I will not ask you to tell me. Epicurus, Limnos, Ephestos, God, Ephestos, God of, of the fire. So all these islands have also new modern names, historical names. If we start from Lesbos, we have Mirivillis, Venezis, Eftaliotis, the Nobel laureate elites, come, all these people come from Lesbos. It was the famous spring of letters in Lesbos at the time. If you go to Hios, you will find Psycharis, the introducer of the Motiki. You have the famous astrono, astrophysician Krimizis in Hios. If you go to Samos, you will find the famous cardiologist Stephanadis. What these things, what I said means, that if you squeeze all these islands, you get civilization. There will be only civilization left, but not civilization only. Also sea, you will find sea. What I said earlier, Hios is the, is the home land of the most famous ship owners around the world. The 25% of the world fleet, merchant fleet, belong to people coming from Hios and the Nusses. It's two islands belonging to our region. Therefore, what are these islands? Civilization and sea. And we're proud about that. Also, are islands of long expectance of life. If you take Ikaria, one of the islands, most people leave this world after 100 years old. A lot of universities are making research there, trying to find the reason of living so long. Ikaria. So come there if you want to live long. Nisi of Zoias, uh, islands of well-being. It's the most of hot springs in Greece. They come from these islands. They are in these islands. The famous Suze of Lesbos, which gives joy in life. The famous, as I said before, wines of Samos. The famous Mastiha of Chios. Mastiha, which is now included in many products. These are islands of physical and geophysical phenomena. In Lesbos, you will find one of the two existing in the world petrified forests. One of the existing petrified forests in the world, one is in Arizona and the other is in North Aegean Islands. Many people visit them. They are trees which petrified during, during the volcano eruptions. The bird watching of Lesbos. This morning I was coming to England and the airplane was full of Britons coming from bird watching. Bird watching is very famous. The pedestrian roads, the pedestrian paths in Hios and Samos. 
the sand hills of Limnos. If you go there, you will think you are in the middle of Sahara, but you are in Limnos. Islands of North Aegean are the islands of love. Homosexual and heterosexual. The first, the first Roman which was written in antiquity, in old times, was Daphne and Chloe. It was written by a lesbian of the time in Lesbos Island. In Lesbos, you will find some of the skeleton, some parts of the skeleton of Saint Val Valentine. Aios Valentinos. And of course, Lesbos is the capital of lesbian love. And we're proud for that. And we help it, we give money for that. They have a very good festival, it's September. So if you want to join, you are welcome. The islands of religious pilgrims. Taxiarchis in Lesbos. Agios Rafael, Panagia Stinagiaso, Agia Markela Stichio, Inea Moni Stichio. Therefore, I tried with few words to describe this islands. I hope to see you there all the next summer and you will be most welcomed by us. And thank you for coming here. And once more, thank you, my wife, It is my privilege to introduce the Archbishop Nikitas of London, a distinguished leader, a spiritual leader of the Greek Orthodox of Theatira and Great Britain. We are honored by his presence tonight as he shares his wisdom and spiritual grace to enrich our gathering. Let's join together in embracing this inspiring and uplifting occasion. Please, an applause for our Archbishop. Kagispera says, good evening to all. If one were to be in space and look into the Mediterranean and the Aegean, one would see some rocks almost floating there. Those are the Greek islands. And it is on those islands where the people are defined by history, by music, by dance, by food, by faith, by culture, by heritage, and an unbroken tradition of hundreds and hundreds of years that is not lost. For those of you who have never been to Greece, for those of you who have never gone to the islands, life is too short to miss out on quality. And as an islander by heritage, even though from another island group, I invite you to visit. Visit the northern islands in the Aegean. Visit and see the culture and meet the people. But don't go from June to September 1st. <laughs> They're filled with tourists. You need to go when the tourists are gone and experience the locals. I thank the organizers of this evening I thank the Periferiarchi for coming here to be with us and to share his words of wisdom. And in advance, already from now, Kali Megalovdomada, Kalo Pascha, Ke Kali Anastasi. Thank you, Father. So, Your Excellency, the Ambassador of Greece to the UK, Mr. Ioannis Chausis, I think it's your turn to join me on the stage. Please say an applause for our Ambassador. Σεβασμιότατε κύριε Περιφερειάρχα, κύριε Πατερμοστή της Κυπριακής Δημοκρατίας, κυρίες και κύριοι, ladies and gentlemen, it, let, let me put on my blue glasses. 
because we are talking about the Aegean. Uh, it is an honor to stand before you today to share a few words about the captivating North Aegean Islands, a region of unparalleled beauty, rich cultural heritage and culinary. These islands have long been celebrated for their breathtaking landscapes, crystal clear waters, and warm hospitality. From the petrified forest of Lesbos to the idyllic beaches of Samos, each island offers a unique tapestry of sights, sounds, and experiences waiting to be explored. But beyond their natural splendor, the North Aegean Islands are home to a vibrant and diverse community, as has already been said, of people whose warmth and generosity know no bounds. Here, traditions are cherished, and visitors are welcomed with open arms, invited to immerse themselves in age-old customs and celebrations that have been passed down through generations. Hios Festival stands out as a captivating tourist attraction, offering visitors a unique blend of historical charm and natural beauty. The island's renowned mastic production with its centuries-old tradition and the amazing mastic museum adds a fascinating cultural dimension to any visit. It also provides insights into the local way of life and economy. From exploring the picturesque mastic villages to indulging in mastic flavored delicacies and drinks, Hios offers travelers a truly immersive experience, an experience celebrating both its natural wonders and cultural heritage. As we gather here today, let us not only marvel at the splendor of the North Aegean Islands, but also the, recognize the incredible potential they hold as a destination for travelers. Visitors who seek authentic experiences and unforgettable memories, and I don't necessarily mean the Uso experience, at least not only. This is not a usual diplomatic expression, especially in public speaking, but I urge you to explore beyond the beaten path of Ikaria, where the secret of longevity is well hidden, to wander through the villages of Mesta in Hios, savor the flavors of local cuisine in Limnos and connect with the people who call these islands home. In doing so, you will not only discover the true essence of the North Aegean islands, but also leave a piece of their magic in your heart. You said, Mr. Commissioner, that uh, uh, these, these islands are the islands of love, and I want to, to share a personal experience. This is a magic. Uh, which I also carry since my childhood, as my first holiday experience without parents as a high school student was in Molivos, Lesbos. I invite you all to live such a Greek experience, and if Greek, to spread the news to your friends across the UK. Πείτε το σε όλους τους φίλους σας, να πάνε και φέτος στην Ελλάδα, να πάνε και φέτος στο Βόρειο Αιγαίο, να πάνε και φέτος σε όλα τα ελληνικά νησιά. I'm sure you will they will cherish your time there and your time in North Aegean Island and Greece as a whole, now and forever. Thank you very much. We are grateful for having among us also the High Commissioner of the Republic of Cyprus, Mr. Kyriakos Kouris, that I want to welcome also him on stage for a greeting. Good evening, everybody. Your Eminence, <coughs> Mr. Commissioner, Ambassador of Greece, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> I recently arrived to, to, to Britain, and uh, I didn't come here prepared to promote the tourism to Aegean, to the Northern Aegean, but I was already convinced that I should travel there next summer. Although I do have roots from uh, Samos, uh, my grandfather from the side of my mother came from Samos. He was uh, uh, born in the early 20th century and he traveled to Athens, became a, a, a military. He joined the military together with his brother. He fought the Second World War. He fought, unfortunately, the Civil War, which he described me that was the most nightmarish time in his life. And uh, he even went to Korea. 
So I have roots in Samos, and indeed it's one of the most beautiful islands in the northern uh, uh, Aegean. Today, however, I came to address the Greek audience, so you will allow me, those who do not speak Greek, but I will talk to Greek. Greek. Είναι μεγάλη μου χαρά και τιμή να βρίσκομαι ανάμεσά σα σε αυτή την εκδήλωση, η οποία φιλοξενείται από το, στο ελληνικό κέντρο του Λονδίνου, στο πλαίσιο των πολιτιστικών δρόμενων που διοργανώνει η περιφέρεια Βορείου Αιγαίου. Είναι μια στιγμή που μου προσφέρει την ευκαιρία να εκφράσω την εκτίμησή μου για το έργο που επιτελείται εδώ, καθώ και να συναντήσω ανθρώπου που συμβάλλουν στην προώθηση του ελληνικού πολιτισμού και των τεχνών εκτό Ελλάδα, εκτό Κύπρου. Η παρουσία μου σε αυτή την εκδήλωση αποτελεί ένα βήμα αναγνώριση τη ενίσχυση των δεσμών μεταξύ τη Κύπρου και των νησιών του Βορείου Αιγαίου, καθώ και την ενίσχυση των δεσμών των Κυπριακών και Ελληνικών κοινοτήτων που διαμένουν στο Ηνωμένο Βασίλειο με τα νησιά του Βορείου Αιγαίου. Πιστεύω ακράδαντα ότι μέσα από την πολιτιστική ανταλλαγή και την κοινωνική επαφή μπορούμε να ενισχύουμε τι διμερεί σχέσει και να αναπτύσσουμε νέε μορφέ συνεργασία και κατανόηση. Επιπλέον, η δική σα παρουσία εδώ σήμερα είναι μια ακόμα απόδειξη του ενδιαφέροντο και τη αφοσίωση των μελών των Βρετανικών κοινοτήτων που ενδιαφέρονται για τον πολιτισμό και το έργο που επιτελείται στα νησιά του Βορείου Αιγαίου, ενισχύοντα του δεσμού των διαφορετικών κοινοτήτων και προάγοντα την κοινωνική και πολιτιστική κατανόηση. Θέλω να ευχαριστήσω θερμά την Περιφέρεια Βορείου Αιγαίου για την ευγενική πρόσκληση να παραβρεθώ σε αυτή την εκδήλωση. Επιπλέον, εκφράζω τι ευχαριστίε μου προ όλου εσά που βρίσκεστε εδώ σήμερα για την αφοσίαση και το πάθος που επιδεικνύεται προς τον πολιτισμό και την τέχνη. Τέλος, εκφράζω την ελπίδα μου ότι αυτή η εκδήλωση θα αποτελέσει ένα φόρο τιμής στον πολιτισμό και την ιστορία των νησιών του Βορείου Αιγαίου, θα συμβάλλει στην ενίσχυση των δεσμών μεταξύ του λαού και των κοινοτήτων μας. Ευχαριστώ πολύ για την προσοχή σας. Εύχομαι μια επιτυχημένη εκδήλωση. Thank you very much for your attention. Mr. Lazopoulos, we... Κύριε Λαζόπουλε, χαίρομαι που σας βλέπω. Είμαι από τη γενιά που ε, διασκέδαζε με τους 10 μικρούς μίτσους σας. Μακάρι να επανέλθετε με αυτό το θέμα. <laughs> Καλό βράδυ. Thank you so much, Mr. Kouros. Before we delve into the vibrant cultural activities of the North Aegean region, let us first extend our heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed sponsors and supporters. We commend Eurobank, our major event sponsor, for their unwavering support of the HEOS Festival over the years. Our warmest thanks go to the Greek Embassy in London, the Greek National Tourism Organization Office in the UK and Ireland, the Hellenic Centre in London, the Maritime Museum of HEOS, the Hellenic Foundation for Culture, and the Hellenic Engineer Society of Great Britain for their gracious support. The Maritime Museum of HEOS, founded by the descendants of uh, Anastasis and Maruko Pateras, is a vital repository of Hian history, showcasing a diverse collection of nautical artifacts and ship models spanning ancient times to modern commercial vessels. As the museum celebrates its 30th anniversary, it continues to honor the island's rich maritime and trading traditions, inviting all to join us on this uh, extraordinary journey during the Hios Festival. The Hellenic Foundation for Culture, led by President Mr. Nikolaos Koukis, has played a pivotal role in promoting Greek language and culture worldwide. We extend our gratitude to Mr. Kiriaki Mitsu for her support and encourage HFA, HFC UK to continue their invaluable cultural endeavors. A special acknowledgement to philanthropist Ms. Chrysanthi Lemou, ambassador of the Movement for Island Protection, whose presence tonight is a true honor. Let us all show our appreciation for her dedication with a round of applause. Thank you all for joining us in this exceptional celebration brought to us by the Prefecture of the Northern Aegean. Now, in 2022, a groundbreaking event unfolded on the picturesque island of Homer in Mirovolo Hios. 
the inaugural medieval Hios festival, where art served as our, our guide on a mesmer, mesmerizing journey through Hios rich history and culture, spanning from the Middle Ages to present day. The festival's mission? To unveil the island's breathtaking beauty and showcase its unique architectural treasures through a series of innovative artistic spe spectacles designed to inspire, entertain, and seamlessly wave together different eras, landscapes, and memories in a way that only art can achieve. A highlight of this debut festival was the dazzling exhibition of theatrical Renaissance costumes by Yanni Metzikov, previously showcased as presti at prestigious venues like the National Gallery of Athens and Covent Garden in London. The exhibition was inaugurated by the Archbishop of USA, Elpidophoros, at Maria Chacos Foundation a moment of graduate and uh, cultural significance. Another forgettable experience was the captivating visual installation titled Colors of Another Era, master, masterfully directed uh, by uh, Andonis Luvaros and presented in the evocative square of Castle of Hios by the esteemed actress, actress Katerina Geronicolu. The momentum continued into September 2023, with a festival returning under the patronage of the Greek National Tourism Organization, the Ministry of Culture, and now proudly under the auspices of the British Embassy in Athens and the University of the Aegean. This edition expanded to encompass the entire island of, of Hios, from the historic castle of Volisos to the medieval southern regions of Olympus and Mesu. Imagine engaging, imagine engaging uh, in, a diverse, in a diverse array of activities. Sports events, captivating painting exhibitions, lively folk traditions, gastronomic delights, soul streeting concerts, enlightening lectures by esteemed individuals, and thought-provoking documentary screenings, all against the stunning backdrop of Hio's natural and architectural wonders. The festival attracted an illustrious lineup of participants and supporters, including Iromane, Lina Nicolacopoulou, Pandelista Lasinos, Argiro Barbarigu, Takis Marvrotas, Elena Kelesidu, Gujob Nicky, George Babignotis, Roderick Beaton, George Winston, the Earl of St. Andrews, Michael Moscos, Elena Matheopoulou, and British Ambassador Matthew Lodge. Just a glimpse of the esteemed figures who enrich this cultural extravaganza. Now, let's dig deeper into the inciting evenings of culture. At the meticulously restored 16th century Venetian mansion Castelli, owned by the Fafia family and steeped in history as a former residence of a, of a Venetian military commander of Hios. This extraordinary estate, nestled on the Mirovolo Cape, stood dormant for, uh, for centuries before being revived to host unique cultural soirees and uh, that transport guests through time and leave an invisible mark on their hearts. Join us, join us as we explore these immersive cultural experiences and celebrate the enduring legacy of Hios history and heritage. Mr. Michael Moskos, director of the Hellenic Prize, an esteemed international institution headquartered in London, dedicated to promoting Hellenic culture globally, will share in insights on these captivating evenings of culture at the historic Venetian mansion. Please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your kind words, Mrs. Masetta. I hope I'm being heard, although I would kindly ask you to tone down the bus from the back of the room, because I can hardly hear myself speaking. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, Your Reverence, Your Lordships, honored guests, friends and lovers of Greece, dear friends, 
We are gathered here this evening to celebrate life and culture on the islands of the North Aegean, primarily Chios and Lesbos, courtesy of the governor of the region, Mr. Kostas Mujuris. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the third consecutive year of the Chios Festival, building on its extraordinary success last year and responding to the demands of a wide audience reaching beyond the cultural hub of Chios to Lesbos perhaps to Samos as well next year, and even to the mainland, including tourists, visitors, some from Turkey, what a pleasant surprise, and Greeks from abroad. The initiative has been long overdue. The islands of the Eastern Aegean have withstood the tests of time for several millennia, acting as the unbreakable spinal cord of the Aegean world a spinal cord bending both eastward toward Asia Minor and westward toward mainland Greece, while keeping alive commercial and cultural links with both shores. Yes, almost all towns and ports from Imbros and Tenedos to Rhodes and the Castellorizo look eastward and have always done so since they were established 3,000 years ago, centers of a Hellenic world that included Anatolia and the Levant. The spinal cord of the Eastern Aegean Islands marks indeed not just a national border and a European borderline before the Asian continent's 8,000 kilometer mammoth stretch from the sunny shores of the Aegean to the waves of the Pacific, but also now more than ever before during the past 20 centuries the end of Christendom. We're all well aware, especially since William Darling pulls travel history from the Holy Mountain, published some 20 years ago, that Christianity in the once Byzantine lands from Constantinople to Alexandria has reached its end. And this has meant the beginning of the new unchristian world of Asia Minor and the Near East, localities where Christianity originated and once thrived. Europe, we still think, remains Christian. It may well be that England and the UK are as far removed from this cultural reformation as geographically possible. But Hios, Lesbos, Samos, and their Aegean siblings are literally a stone's throw away from a vastly different, often unwelcoming, sometimes belligerent Asian world. Our Cypriot friends in this room know full well the meaning of this neighborliness. And so, and so, to return to our starting point, the European region of the Eastern Aegean, headed now for a second four year term by Governor Kostas Mujuris, with the dedicated assistance of his wife Dimitra has managed to create a cultural hub on the historic island of Chios, a hub about to spread its wings to Lesbos next door this summer and to attract more attention and participation both nationally and internationally. Speaking as a Kian who lived most of his life abroad but has kept his roots well connected with his native island, I must express my appreciation and thanks. You may wish to join me in giving a warm applause to the Mujuris couple and their able team for offering such a splendid cultural gift to the islands of the Eastern Aegean. <laughs> last summer, last summer, ladies and gentlemen, hosted under the citrus trees of the wonderful Castelli Mansion, a Genoese mansion until the late 16th century, and since then part and parcel of the Hian campus, now given new life and purpose by the Vafias family. We had Professor Roderick Beaton discuss Byron, the birth of Philhellenism, its impact on the cultural life, literature, and arts of Europe. We followed our much admired linguistic historian George Babignotis, talk about Adamandios Corais, raised and educated in the Kian quarter of Smyrna, beacon of the European Enlightenment, friend of Voltaire, instigator of the revolutionary mentality 
that eventually allowed the Greeks to free themselves from Ottoman rule. We were quite absorbed by music historian Zelena Matheopoulos' commentary and excerpts from Rossini's opera, The Siege of Corinth, inspired by the massacre of Hyos, as similarly were Bizet's oratorio composed as a hymn to the brave revolution of the Greeks, and Paul Carrère's, a Greek-Italian, two operas, Marco Bozzeri and Kira Rossini, inspired by specific incidents of the struggle for liberty. And then, quite out of the blue, in the still of the late Aegean night of the campus, we heard Ravel's four Kian leader, four Kian songs, composed for the tragedy of 1822 massacre and particularly commemorating the loss of infants and children, sung by a young student and the chorus of the Odeon of Hios, accompanied on the piano and directed by their teacher. Ladies and gentlemen, that was magic indeed. We will always remember, or rather we will never forget. Fashion and dress designer Yanis Metzikov spoke to us about perceptions of beauty. Art historian Takis Mavrotas gave a pictorial analysis of Delacroix's famous painting, its details in coloration and portraiture, and its huge public appeal in Paris at the time. Most evenings drew to a close with piano music and singing performed by our hostess Nineta Vafias and her friends. The Hios Festival, the Lesbos Festival this year as well, cultural festivities in the Northern Aegean will be celebrated again this summer in one of the most historical regions within Europe. 1821 was the first year of the revolution which kept mainland Greece in flames until the Battle of Navarino in 1827. 1822 was the year of the unprecedented genocidal massacre of Chios, which inspired and motivated the Philhellenic movement in Western Europe. It must be mentioned that last year's festival started off with the projection of a new historical documentary on the massacre of Chios, shown to a capacity audience at the Chakos Foundation Open Air Theater. 1824 was the year of the destruction of the island of Kassos, and later the same year, the destruction of the island of Psara by the forces of Ibrahim, vice regent of Egypt, an intimate ally of the Sultan. And the story goes on, calendarized and dated year after year. The islands of the Eastern Aegean, you may have noticed, are drenched in history, covered by inscriptions and monuments, memorials, stories, facts and testimonials from the archaic times of Homer and Sappho through the Hellenistic and Roman periods, the Byzantine centuries, the Christian travels of the apostles and saints, the sagas of the creators of modern Greece of Ioannis Kapodistrias Rigas Fereos. Unlike other parts of Europe, if one were to compile a 3,000-page daily calendar, there would be no gaps, ladies and gentlemen, no empty pages. Some pages would remain incomplete, representing just blanks to be filled in by new research by a younger generation. I would like to mention just one of these gaps. Very recently, the manuscript the Ottoman manuscript compiled in 1826 of the 42,000 massacred Kians of the massacre of 1822 was discovered in the library of Sofia, Bulgaria. It was discovered, ladies and gentlemen, because on the Ottoman scribblings of each family name, for example, Mr. Raleigh and his wife massacred three children, five servants, etc., etc., all in perfect Ottoman calligraphy. Across that sort of angular little triangle, there is a line in red ink inscribed by the scrivener of the Sultan in red ink, saying this is correct and it should be shown to the Sultan so that the remuneration can be paid 
to Vahid Pasha, who was responsible for the massacre of Hughes. So then, this document, this manuscript, has been found. The names of 42,000 massacred Kians are on this document, which was approved by the Sultan and which was uh, and, uh, the, the guard of uh, the, the, the Ottoman guard of Hughes were <clears throat> um, given their proper rewards. So there's no question, and I'm feeling an empty page here, there's no question that the massacre of Hears was a genocide of at least 42,000 uh, men, women, and children, mostly women and children, in an island isolated from the rest of the world where rivers of blood covered the whole of the city and most of the major villages, and there were unburied people until the 1850s when Flaubert and Maxime de Camp visited Hios and saw the blood and the, the dead bodies still unburied outside some of the villages. I'm not going to go on about this, but this is an example of an empty page that has to be filled in. We're talking about a registered genocide. It is about time that the history of the Aegean Islands becomes more widely known and properly valued, both within its natural and European context, as well as, dare I say this, at this turbulent period, as part of the Mediterranean world, of which the Aegean has been an essential appendix, the sea corridor leading north to the Black Sea and south to the Red Sea. And so in many ways, the Aegean has remained at the center of the evolving, unstable world we have managed to create. For those of us keeping an anchor in its blue waters, including the Greek world of ocean shipping, this is no exaggeration. The Aegean is indeed a very large archipelago. The more you get to know it, the more it expands in space and time in historical and environmental significance. Its beauty can easily reach to the stars, especially on a calm summer night. Taking your boat southward then, with its small outboard motor and trusting the Aegean waves to guide you safely to an unknown destination, you will certainly meet the small cycladic islands of Amos and Nisos. Tucked away somewhere in the vicinity of Milos and Naxos, perhaps, or of Vilos and Poliagos, as far away from the tourist overkill of Mykonos and Sandorini as your diesel caic or wooden ferry boat can drop anchor. You may then, if you are lucky and not too much of a shopping tourist, happen to meet Helena MacLeod and her English friends. You will recognize her by her rich red hair her unkempt appearance, her genuine charm and unaffected smile. You would be lucky to have met her before she has inadvertently broken the beautiful cycladic figurine unearthed by her devious boyfriend who intended to smuggle it and sell it through one of the big London auctioneers. This, ladies and gentlemen, could happen to you on the island of Nisos if you were very lucky. Should you not happen to be so lucky, however, you could easily pick up a copy of Victoria Hislop's latest novel, The Figurine, from your nearest bookshop, and read, read, read the wonderful story of innocent Helena MacLeod, daughter of Mary Papayanis and Hamish MacLeod, on her way to chemistry at Oxford, her useful disappointments as a young girl toward experience and maturity, her slow, intrepid process of recognizing her true self in Athens and of realizing her inherited Greekness. I will not reveal any more details of the plot, even if you press me to do so, especially since I can now spot in the audience author Victoria Hislop, the creator of this great novel of Anglo-Hellenic love, passion for justice, for historical truth, and for honesty in human relations. The island, the return, 
carte postale from Greece, those who are loved, are among Victoria Hislop's inspiring novels and stories. Her love of Greece remains the solid background to all of them, a vivid expression of her love for the country, for its history, its landscapes, its peoples, its ways of life, costumes and traditions, its language, music, its cultural identities. I can think of no other literary personality of our time who has brought English-speaking culture to closer understanding and friendship with Greek culture than Victoria Hislop. As you all know, she was granted honorary Greek citizenship by the Greek government three years ago. We're very fortunate indeed to have Victoria Hislop with us this evening. We will be very fortunate to welcome her to the Hughes Festival in late August. Her imaginative storytelling, her compelling narratives, open doors of appreciation and new meaning for all of us. Honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege and pleasure to ask Victoria Hislop to speak to us. Distinguished guests, honored guests, uh, British, Greeks, and from wherever else in the world you may come. And thank you so much for the invitation tonight, Mr. and Mrs. Mutsuri, uh, to this wonderful celebration of the North Aegean Islands. Yes, I'm a bit smaller than everyone else, I think. And for this invitation to the HEOS Festival which I'm immensely looking forward to in, in September. I accepted very enthusiastically um, the invitation to the festival because it will be my first visit to an island that I've long been conscious of but have never had the opportunity to go. The very first time I was aware of somewhere called Chios, or probably I've pronounced it Chios, or British people seem to find it a difficult word to say. It was a long time ago, perhaps four decades, when I saw Delacroix's famous painting in the Louvre, The Massacre at Chios. And it was a work of art that actually was unveiled this August, 200 years ago. And since that time in the Louvre, I've read a great deal more about the history of Greece and have a better grasp of what happened to the inhabitants of that island in 1822. And going to the place itself will be an opportunity to learn even more, to feel. Oh, you can't hear. Oh. I'm here, sorry to interrupt. Maybe if you go closer to the microphone. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes? <laughs> so there are plenty of things I'm looking forward to. For my writer's imagination, there's nothing more alluring than the atmosphere and stories that dwell in dereliction. And Anavatos, the abandoned medieval village, which I was looking at pictures of today, is definitely on my list. And I hear it is Chios's very own version of Mr. Ass. Another place I've read about and seen many photos of is the former leprosy hospital of Chios a kind of twin with the island of Spinalonga in Crete. So plenty of inspiration is coming my way. And of course, it's impossible not to spend as much time in Greece as I do without being aware of this mysterious mastika. And I'm intrigued by this remarkable and unique product with all the health benefits that are being enjoyed around the world. And although it will be my first visit to Chios, I've already been to several other islands in the North Aegean, Limnos, Ikaria, and Lesbos. And all of them confirm that every island has its own very specific identity, its own flavors, its own distinctive atmosphere and culture. And my memories of these three islands remain very vivid. My experience, images, and memories very different one from another. Although I was 16 years old when I first visited an Aegean island with my mother, 
I was more impatient for my own daughter. She was aged only 16 months when we took her to Limnos. I don't think she can recall it at all, but for us it was a very magical time on an island that provided everything that we wanted for a relaxing holiday with our little girl. Safe, sandy beaches, warm Aegean waters, and her first introduction to Greek food. I don't remember that we did anything of great cultural note, but as parents, we gave each other turns to water ski, while the other one paddled with Emily. It was a perfect holiday, sunshine, swimming, relaxing, classic Greek times. And then a few years later, in the spring of 2016, I went to Lesvos for the Sunday Times. That was a very different trip, witnessing the sight of thousands of refugees who were being accommodated in camps with more and more arriving each day. I became very interested in the effect of this worldwide event on the local people who were suddenly overwhelmed by the scale of the suffering and the physical needs of those arriving. I met people who were taking part every night in saving lives as boatloads of people were being washed up on the shore. I met people who were baking bread for the refugees, knitting for their children, and local fishermen who were pulling human beings rather than fish from the sea. The people I met on Lesvos didn't give a second thought to the sacrifices they were making with their businesses. I saw much of the landscape of Lesbos and took in its beauty, but it was the people and their kind hearts that stayed with me. And then to Ikaria, a while after that, a place that inspired me in all sorts of ways, ranging from the myth of Icarus, the island's brief existence as an independent state, its period as a place of exile, and of course its reputation as a blue zone, where people remain fit and healthy to a very above average age. Icaria gave me the idea of retelling the Daedalus and Icarus story, and it formed part of my novel, Carte Postale from Greece, and I just thought I'd read a little bit from the part that concerns this very special island, and the chapter is called Waiting in the Wings. And what the character of the story, just so that you don't think it's me who's the first person, um, is a middle-aged man who's exploring Greece to rediscover his joie de vivre. And it's actually in a career where he finally does so. By the end of my first afternoon exploring this remote and rugged island, I knew I was right to have followed my instincts in going there and I had a feeling that I wouldn't be in a hurry to leave. I hardly saw another car, and the dramatic, rocky landscape was astonishing. I got out at one point and sat for several hours on a wide stretch of smooth, white rock that sloped down to the sea. The sun was on my back, and I felt an extraordinary sense of peace. I can only attribute it to the light that seemed to saturate everything around me. Both sea and sky seemed luminously blue that day. Several times on my journey, these joyous moments stole up on me, and that day especially, I had the feeling that time had stood still here for a thousand years. I had not come to Icaria just for nature and solitude. I was interested in the people too. Behind the comment about the island being full of old people, was something much more intriguing. Life expectancy on this out-of-the-way island is much, much higher than anywhere else in Europe. Along with all the scientists who've come here to study this phenomenon, I wonder what the secret was. Each day I was there, I met energetic octogenarians and nonagenarians who were shop shopkeeping, running cafes and small hotels, fishing or mending boats. They have full heads of silver white hair and the skin and physique of people half their age. 
Some say that their longevity is a result of a stress-free lifestyle. They get up late, open their shops at a leisurely time, do what they feel like when they feel like it, and definitely don't go out of their way to encourage tourists. Or perhaps it has something to do with the radium-rich hot springs that emerge on the island and flow into the sea. Nobody quite knows the answer, but they say that one in three people lives into his or her 90s. The most extraordinary person I met was a woman who called herself Ariadne. I gathered that opinions about her in the town of Aios Kirikos, where she lived, were mixed. Many said that she was a fantasist. Others were less kind and told me she was mad. One thing that nobody could disprove was her claim to be the oldest person on the island, simply because there was no one who could prove themselves to be older. Her hair was as strong and silver as embroidery thread, and her childlike skin was pale and smooth, like the inside of an eggshell. She could have been any age at all. She was the island eccentric, a curiosity for the tourists, usually to be found in a cafe on the seafront, where she advertised her Icarus tours. I joined one of these conducted walks. Ten of us stood on the quayside under a huge modern sculpture that represented a pair of wings. Sweeping a hand in a southerly direction, Ariadne announced that she was going to tell us about two birds who came from Crete. When Ariadne began to speak, her audience was immediately enthralled. She talked in the present tense, as historians often do, in order to bring a story alive, and the imagination of the group was stirred as she relived the events that she described. As I listened, I was ready to believe not only that she was the most senior of all Icarians, but also she had been born thousands of years before us all. Sometimes it is the storyteller as much as the story itself that makes a lasting impression. So just to continue a little bit about my own relationship with Greece and why it inspires me to, to write, um, as indeed it did with Carte Postale. For many visitors, perhaps I'm different from many, Greece is often imagined with the prefix ancient, and indeed there is much that takes us back to the days of antiquity. But for me, it's usually the recent past, the 20th century, essentially, that has the greatest appeal and holds the most surprises and the most inspiration. What began for me as a simple philhellenism, a love of the surface attractions of this country, turned into a journey to discover the early decades of the 20th century. And as a novelist, it has been the 20th century's history that has been so rich in inspiration and fascination, much more so than the ancient. Why does Greece have an influence that exceeds any reasonable expectation in relation to its size in terms of language, culture, and philosophy, to name but three? Personally, I have no difficulty in believing in the idea that Greece is the center of the world. If you draw two lines freehand across the standard map of the world, the place where they meet, more or less, is Greece. And Zeus tested this out when, they, when he sent two eagles to fly from opposite directions in the world, and they met in Delphi, at the spot where the Omphalos, the navel of the world as it became known, was located. I was in Delphi two weeks ago, and as usual felt this quasi-mystical truth that makes Greece and its islands a place of unlimited inspiration for writers, and simply a, somewhere that's more than just a place to go for sea and sunshine or to visit archaeological sites. It offers something much deeper than that on the island and on islands and on the mainland. It was an island not in the North Aegean but in the South Aegean that inspired me to write my first work of fiction called, quite simply, 
the island. One year in Crete, I picked up a guidebook in our holiday apartment situated close to Ayos Nikolaos and noticed a paragraph that referenced the 1950s, not BC, but AD. It mentioned a tiny island, an islet, very close to where we were staying that had functioned as a leprosy colony between 1903 and 1957. I suspect the same years that the, uh, the hospital in Chios was functioning. For me, that period was hardly history at all. I was born in 1959, so it felt almost contemporaneous, and I was intrigued that such a place had existed in the 20th century, thinking that the disease of leprosy had been eliminated many centuries earlier. A short drive and a five-minute boat trip later, we were stepping on to Spinalonga. This was in 2001, and the stone buildings erected during its Turkish occupation and later lived in by the sick were mostly semi-derelict back then, with tiny fragments of curtain still flapping from window frames, patches of bright blue paint still clinging to the plastered walls, and pots overflowing with geraniums that I imagined had originally been planted by patients. The human traces left by the former inhabitants of this place still felt so alive. Late in the afternoon, the island was quiet, emptied of all visitors but ourselves. And there was a strange sense that the patients who lived there had gone for a quick stroll, but were about to return home. As I surveyed the small row of shops, a tiny church, a bakery with its big oven, the same as any um, Greek foronos in any village, the sudden appearance of a cat only added to the impression of the imminent return of people who lived there. There were no information boards or signage back then. I'm hoping the same in Chios with the hospital. The tour guides had already left for the afternoon and the details in the book I had in my hand contained minimal information. It told me which year it opened, which was when, internationally, doctors were instructed that leprosy patients should be isolated, and then which year it closed, in 1957, when, finally, the cure had been found. My first reaction to the place was a purely emotional one. It did not feel haunted by the spirits of the dead and dying, this place. Quite the opposite. It felt like a happy place and the atmosphere was gloomy, not gloomy, but joyful. There was beauty and peace. And at the end of our one hour visit, I was reluctant to leave. By then, however, a story was already forming in my mind. Perhaps in the dust, those who had lived there had left their DNA, just as was conjured up a moment ago when listening to the idea that there were unburied bodies in Hios for so many years. Whatever it was, I felt the warm hand of history reaching out, and it felt unfamiliar but undeniable. At that point in my life, I was working as a journalist, mostly writing travel articles for newspapers and magazines, but I knew I could not make Spinalonga the subject of a factual piece with just 2,000 words. I wanted to make use of what to me was a strange and different chemistry a mix of what I had seen and what I had felt, which was essentially a contradiction. So many people had died in this place, but they seemed to have lived lives that resembled ours, with books on wooden shelves and pots of herbs on window ledges. Both men and women had inhabited Spinalonga and children too, some born there to patients, others sent there with the disease. As I was to learn, the leprosy patients were hardly thought of as human from the day they were exiled. They had few rights, zero hope, and yet it was obvious they had not given up. And this is what fiction can do. It can, through the imagination, conjure up and bring to life some approximation of those real lives, including their pain, their fear, happiness, and courage. My story of a 20-year period of Spinalonga's history from despair to cure had to contain the true and the factual, 
including the disease of the science and the therapy. It also had to include the reality of what Greece went through in a wider context during the years that spanned war, occupation, and famine. How had people survived? What had they lived on? What was their education? What happened if they defied the Nazi occupiers? My eyes were gradually open to the reality of Greece's history and the reality of the challenges people faced before tourism came along and in some respects painted over the past, creating an idyllic picture of Greece that I had always naively accepted and assumed had forever been the reality. Spinalonga in some very strong sense pushed the door ajar and stirred the beginnings of my interest in what we call recent history, an era that can be so easily lost or overlooked. Social history is often not written down. It's the history of day-to-day -day life and often goes unrecorded. And writing the island was an experience that changed my life in many ways because it impelled me into a fiction writing career but also, perhaps more importantly for me, compelled me to look at Greece in a new way. And this did not mean digging down many layers to find the past, just scratching the surface seemed to be enough. I've written eight novels since that one, and with one exception, they've all been set in Greek locations, and actually I think all of them have been launched in this very hall, which is why I absolutely love the Hellenic Centre. It's my second home. When I can't be in Greece, here has to do. The latest uh, novel, The Figurine, is based in Athens and set on Amos and Nissos, those fictitious um, Aegean islands, all inspired by actual places. The focal point is the theft of a priceless archaeological treasure and ex expresses my growing interest in the ancient past and a new understanding of how and why our discoveries about antiquity matter in the 21st century and why we should value and protect human culture. It is, of course, a theme that's particularly relevant in Greece, the birthplace of Western civilization. On my early visits to Aegean Islands, it was the aesthetics I fell in love with, the sunshine, the sea, the intense flavors of food made with local ingredients, the sight of birds of prey above the mountains and the scent of herbs. And all of these things continue to enthrall me many decades on. But with each place I go, and I've now, this morning counted, I've been to more than 40 Greek islands, as well as traveling the length and breadth of the country on book tours. And everywhere I go, I see and experience something new and completely unique, whether it's in the food, the music, nature, history, or some aspect of language. One thing I know that is true for all islands, whether in the North Aegean, the South, anywhere at all, is that every island or every person with, root, with roots on that island, they know and resolutely maintain that their island is the best island. And I love that competitiveness among all my Greek friends who just won't listen to any comparison with an island that is not the place of their birth. Pride in their topos bursts out of, their, out of people. And because I have no blood connection with Greece, it allows me to love every place I go without a sense of betraying another place. I have huge allegiance with Crete, of course, and will always be fiercely loyal, but I am very open to New Island experiences. And for that reason, I can't wait for my first journey to Chios, whether it's the rock where I will be imagining Homer speaking, or whether it's the former leprosy hospital, or whether it's just a dip in the sea, I have a feeling that I will fall under the spell of Hios. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Victoria, for sharing your incredible stories with us and for everything that you have done for our country, of course.
please join me in welcoming the inspiring Dimitra Mojuri, the heart and soul of this HEOS festival, whose passion and dedication have made tonight's celebration possible. Dimitra, your underweighing commitment and tireless efforts have brought the HEOS festival to life, showcasing the island's rich culture and heritage to the world. Your role as a mentor, teacher, and friend is deeply respected by all of us. Thank you, Andriani, for your very kind words. Your Eminence, Your Excellencies, Your Lordships, Distinguished Guests, Agapites Filles, and Agapiti Fili, Tonision, to Vorio. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for being with us and giving us the opportunity to speak of our beloved island, the jewels of the Aegean, the jewels of the Mediterranean. For all those who love them and for those who have yet to discover. Each island has a beauty of its own. It's one of a kind, with a unique character, uh, his own, uh, unique attitudes, and, uh, local, and, lo and local traditions that have survived over many years, and also a history of 4,000 years that has uh, uh, re reflected traditions that have been uh, unspoiled by tourism and globalization. The Hughes Festival originated from our idea, from our need to express our love, admiration, and gratitude for the island of Hughes. The uh, Hughes, uh, Hughes is known for uh, the heroic, its heroic past, for the shipping industry, and for the Mastiha resin. Yet, the goal of the Hughes Festival is to highlight the, the island's unique character and the cultural wealth of, of its, its inhabitants and their warm personality and their warm hospitality also. We see the, we see, we see the festival as an intellectual celebration of the Hellenic mind and the vibrant soul, blending past and future together. Oh, just a minute. Blending past and future together in a creative effort to experience and enjoy music, art, history, science, sports, gastronomy and folk dancing, reminding the world of the glory of Hios. This year, we have the honor to welcome uh, the award-winning film uh, director, Eva Nathada, who will present her latest work, the film titled The Murderess, Iphonisa, in Cambos, following a very interesting roundtable discussion. On the 30th of August, in the atmospheric plaza of the castle, which brings us back to the medieval ages of the Giustiniani family, we will raise your anticipation by organizing a surprise event that we hope you will greatly appreciate and enjoy. The Castelli le lectures start on the 21st of August. The famous actor, director, writer, and researcher Mimi Denisi will speak about her new documentary titled The Woman Behind Elgin. The film producer, Elena Hadji Alexandru, honors us tonight with her presence. The event with close will be George Hadinasius, our beloved composer and pianist. On the 1st of September, Eleftheria Arvanitaki and Eleonora Zuganelli will join us in their concert in the picture fishing port Ichthyoskala, facing the medieval castle walls. On the following dates, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th of September, Professor Tim Whitmers, Regis Professor of Greek in, of Cambridge University, Professor George Babignotis of Athens University, Professor Nick Stambolidis, Director of the Acropolis Museum, uh, George Winsor, the Earl of St. Andrews, Chancellor of Bolton University, the novelist Victoria Hislop, the historian, academic, and broadcaster Dame Bethany Hughes, 
Mihalis Moskos Director Heleni Price, and Professor Christos Zerefos, Secretary General of the Academy of Athens, together with the President of the Academy, Stamatis Krimizis. They will honor us with their participation. Regis Professor Tim Whitmers kindly sent us a note saying, Dear colleagues and friends, I am very sorry that obligations in Cambridge have kept me from joining you tonight. I'm very much looking forward to the festival and I'm honored to have been invited. It will be my first time on Rocky Hills. Though I have very happy memories of Lesbos, Icaria and Limnos. Have a wonderful, memorable evening tonight. I hope to meet many of you in September. Tim Whitmers, FBA, Regis Professor of Greek, University of Cambridge. Each evening at the Castelli will be followed by, by a musical epilogue, including our very own Venusian pianist and composer, George Lemos. The North Aegean region is so very proud to announce SAP4 International Festival, which will be launched to, by, to, for the first time at her birthplace, the island of Lesbos, and more precisely at her native village, Eresos, the global spiritual place of the lesbian communities. The event will take, day, will take place 20 to 22 of June, with contributions from distinguished scholars, such as Professor Sandra Berlinger from the University of Strasbourg, Laurie Lofay from Paris University, La Cité, and Evgenia Kumopoulou, SOGI from the Council of Europe, just to name a few. The vertigo of love and love between women in ancient Greece will be the dominant theme. At the Archaeological Museum of Eresos, actress Markella Yanatu will pay a musical tribute to the famous poet accompanied by traditional instruments such as santuri and pentir. In the sacred shrine Yeronton Meson, where sub four held poetry competitions, we will be hosting a theatrical evening with actresses Stefania Gugliotti and Le Lucia Mihalopoulou, inspired by the legendary personalities of Clitemnistra, Fid Fidra, Antigone, and of course, sub four. On Friday 22, upon sunset, the world-known multidisciplinary German artist Julia Kran will give her performance by the sea at the Castle of Mytilini, uh, entitled Esperus, the Lost Child. Kiota Niselini Dici, Dedigen a Selana, Kata Ti Sapfo, O Pasignosto Se Olus Mas, Ki Agapimenos Lakis Lazopoulos, Tha Mas Feri Pisos Ti Sinchroni Epochi, Me Mia Parastasi, Me Mia Standard Comedy, Pech Ton Titlo, Mia Mana Tu Chthes, Tu Simera Ki Anas Pateras. In turn, Kiota, in turn, uh, after the sunset, the acclaimed actor and playwright Alexis Lazopoulos will give us his own performance, a stand-up comedy entitled A Mother of Yesterday, of Today and a Father. We are very much looking forward to welcome you all uh, in Lesbos in June and in September in Chios. Please do enjoy the local products that you find uh, on your tables that were brought from the islands. Also, for the, from the islands were brought the olive branches. They were brought from the 11 million olive trees of Lesbos. Lesbos, the idyllic island of Daphne and Chloe and Odyssea Seliti, where love is a part of nature. Thank you. Honestly, no one should miss that a festival. Now prepare to be captivated by Eva Nathena, an innovative artist and director whose visionary creations redefine the boundaries of visual arts and cinema. Eva's journey began at the Athens School of Fine Arts where she honed her craft under the mentorship of renowned set designers. She quickly rose to prominence as an assistant to Dr. Fotopoulos, collaborating with esteemed directors like Costa Gavras and Vulgaris in theater and film. Eva's exceptional talent in costume design has earned her the prestigious state prize three times. Her directorial debut with Phonisa, a gripping adaptation of Alexandros Papadiamandis' novel, garnered six awards at the Thessaloniki International Film Festival in 2023. 
solidifying her, her reputation as a trailblazer in the art world. Known for her daring vision and unwavering passion, Evan Athena continues to push boundaries and captivate audiences with her bold and imaginative creations. Please, let's play the trailer of Fonisa. Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. I feel honored to be here and speak about my film, Murderers, my movie, Fonisa, being a part of the next HIOS Festival in September. I must say that I always considered people whose origin comes from the islands, including me, uh, see world in a different way. And I feel that my movie expresses this point of view. But uh, I will ask you to allow me to uh, speak, uh, going deeper to Papa Diamantis, and uh, so speak in my mother's language, Greek. So, σας ευχαριστώ που είμαι εδώ απόψε, συμμετέχοντας με την ταινία μου στο επόμενο φεστιβάλ της Χίου, τον επόμενο Σεπτέμβρη. Αισθάνομαι ότι όλοι οι άνθρωποι που προέρχονται από τα νησιά της πατρίδας μας και γενικώ από τα νησιά βλέπουν τον κόσμο με ένα διαφορετικό βλέμμα. Είναι ίσως το φως, η ανοιχτοσιά της θάλασσας και το ιδιαίτερο αίσθημα της ελευθερίας που τους κάνει να βλέπουν τον κόσμο με αυτόν τον τρόπο. Και ο Παπαδιαμάντης, ένας σπουδαίος συγγραφέας διεθνούς φήμης, έβλεπε τον κόσμο μάλλον με αυτό το βλέμμα πολύ μπροστά από την εποχή του. Το 1836, λέει η ιστορία, 67 χρόνια πριν γράψει αυτό το αφήγημα ο Παπαδιαμάντης, η δημογεροντία της Κοπέλου, η συντηρητική δηλαδή αυτού του νησιού, έστειλαν ένα γράμμα στην γραμματεία της δικαιοσύνης, ούτε καν υπήρχε τότε Υπουργείο της Δικαιοσύνης, ζητώντας να καταργηθεί ο νόμος της πρίκας για να πάψουν οι ανομολόγητοι φόνοι θηλαίων βρεφών. 67 χρόνια μετά, ο Παπαδιαμάντης γράφει αυτό το βιβλίο, το ονομάζει κοινωνικό μυθιστόρημα, ακριβώς γιατί το έστρεψε στην κοινωνία για να δείξει και να πει μια πολύ σκληρή αλήθεια προσπαθώντας να φανερώσει αλλά και να κρύψει όσα δεν του επέτρεπε η εποχή, κατηγορώντας αυτή την πράξη, την ανίερη. 
Το 1976 ο Ελίτης γράφει ένα βιβλίο, το ονομάζει «Παγία του Παπαδιαμάντη» και μας εξηγεί πολύ καλά τι έκανε εκεί μέσα ο Παπαδιαμάντης. Και διαβάζοντας όλες αυτές τις πηγές για δέκα ολόκληρα χρόνια, κατάλαβα βαθιά ότι η φώνησα του Παπαδιαμάντη είναι σαν τον κώδικα, ένα, ένα κώδικα στα Βίντσι. Μόνο με κάτι τέτοιο μπορώ να τον προσωμιάσω, που αποκαλύπτει μία ε, δύσκολη και βαριά σελίδα μιας δυστοπικής πραγματικότητας της Ελλάδας, όμως τη βγάζει στο φως και μας οδηγεί στο να τη δούμε, να καταλάβουμε το διαγενειακό τραύμα, να καταλάβουμε ό,τι έχουμε ζήσει στο παρελθόν και να το φέρουμε στο φως αναλαμβάνοντάς το και λύνοντάς το. Ευτυχήσαμε η ταινία αυτή να είναι πρώτη στο box office της Ελλάδας, μπροστά από το Oppenheimer, μπροστά από το Poor Things. Και αν καμαρώνουμε για κάτι, και εγώ προσωπικά είναι γιατί το 70% από τις 450.000 εισιτήρια που έχει κάνει πλέον στην Ελλάδα και στην Κύπρο, είναι νέα παιδιά. Και αν τα νέα παιδιά, οι μαθητές των σχολείων και οι φοιτητές, συνδέονται και τους μιλά αυτή η ταινία, τότε έχουμε ελπίδα. Σας ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ για τη συμμετοχή της ταινίας σε αυτό το φεστιβάλ και σας ευχαριστώ για την πρόσκληση απόψε. Να είστε καλά. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our last speaker. Mr. Lakis Lazopoulos, an acclaimed actor, writer, scriptwriter, and playwright known for his insightful observations of Greek society. His contributions to theater, television, and film reflect a deep understanding of Greek life. Tonight, Lakis will share his insights into the Sapfo Lesbos Festival, offering a profound perspective. Thank you, Lakis, for your enriching presence on your stage. Γεια σας. <coughs> Θέλω να ευχαριστήσω πάρα πολύ για το κάλεσμα αυτό. Ε, είναι χαρά μου να συμμετέχω στο φεστιβάλ της Λέσβου, στη Σαφό, Σαφό Λέσβος. Ε, Βεβαίω θα κάνω με... όχι τραγωδία, που μου αρέσει πάρα πολύ. Λέω, θα κάνουμε stand-up comedy, που σημαίνει ότι θα ασχοληθούμε μία πλευρά του Έλληνα που την έχει σχεδόν μυστική. Είναι φοβερό ότι το γέλιο θεωρείται με έναν τρόπο σαν... πώς να το πω... Πάντα το, το γέλιο δημιουργεί ενοχές. Δηλαδή, κλαίγαμε πάρα πολύ άνετα στο σπίτι μου, αλλά όταν γελάγαμε την Παρασκευή, είχαμε πολύ μεγάλες συνοχές. Και δεν ξέρω για ποιο λόγο ήθελα πάντα να νικήσω αυτή την Παρασκευή των ενοχών απέναντι στο γέλιο. Και μ' αρέσει που με νεότερους ε, ταλαντούχους ανθρώπους του stand-up comedy θα ασχοληθώ με μία μάνα του χθε, μία μάνα του σήμερα και έναν πατέρα, μιλώντας για τις σχέσεις των αντρών με τη μάνα, γιατί όλοι μας αγαπάμε τη μάνα μας, όλοι αγαπήσαμε τη μητέρα μας, όλοι αγαπάμε τις μανάδες, αλλά είναι περίεργο ότι οι τραγωδίες στην Ελλάδα γίνονται από τις γυναικοκτονίες. Πώς γίνεται αυτοί που αγαπάνε τις μανάδες τους, θα μπορούν να σκοτώνουν τις τους. Πιστεύω ότι υπάρχει μια ώρα τη σύνδεση, που δεν είναι η ώρα και το παρόν να μιλήσω, αλλά θέλω να πω ότι μέσα από το γέλιο μπορεί να ανακαλύψεις δρόμους και να καταλάβεις πολύ περισσότερα πράγματα από ότι όταν κλαις. Το κλάμα δημιουργεί μια κατάσταση που σε απελευθερώνει μεν, αλλά σου δεσμεύει και το μυαλό. Ενώ το γέλιο σε απελευθερώνει. Στο, στη ταινία του Μπέρτο Έκο, στο μοναστήρι, θυμάται εκεί, ε, αν έχετε, ε, όσοι έχετε την ταινία, σκοτώνουν τους μοναχούς 
για το λόγο ότι διαβάζει τον Αριστοφάνη κρυφά. Δηλαδή, το γέλιο διώχνει το φόβο. Και επειδή στην Ελλάδα μας έχουν μάθει να φοβούμαστε, να φοβόμαστε, ε, εγώ θα ήθελα με αυτή την παράσταση να διώξω τον οποιοδήποτε φόβο από όλους τους ανθρώπους, αυτούς που θα δουν την παράσταση, ε, να πω ότι ζούμε σε μια χώρα πάρα πολύ ωραία, ομορφή, και έχουμε μάθει σαν λαός να κοιτάμε πάντα προς τα έξω. Δεν μοιάζουμε με τους άλλους λαούς. Εμείς κοιτάμε προς τα έξω, κοιτάμε προς τη θάλασσα. Ε, εγώ μεγάλωσα βέβαια σε μια πόλη στη Λάρισα, τη Θεσσαλία, στη Θεσσαλία. Ε, η θάλασσα ήταν κάπως μακριά από μας. Τα περισσότερα παιδιά σε εκείνη την εποχή πνιγόντουσαν περισσότερο από τις φωνές από τις μανάδες παρά από το μπάνιο. Δηλαδή, είχαμε τόσο μεγάλο άγχος στο αγκολιβούσα μου και η φωνή της μάνας, πραγματικά σας το λέω, δημιουργούσε έναν πανικό στα παιδιά και συζητάγαμε, θυμάμαι, μικρά, αν θα κολυμπήσουμε, τι φωνές θα ακούσουμε. Ε, σε μια χώρα όπου διαρκεί και περνάμε ένα ωραίο μακρύ καλοκαίρι, όπου ανεβοκοτεβάζουμε συνέχεια τα χειμερινά τα καλοκαιρινά και ανεβοκοτεβάζουμε στους ντουλάπες και είμαστε έρμεο του κλίματος, γιατί το κλίμα είναι πολύ σημαντικό για την Ελλάδα. Βλέπετε ότι όλοι ετοιμαζόμαστε για το καλοκαίρι, για τον τουρισμό και υπάρχει μια μεγάλη ετοιμασία που αν μας χαλούσε ο καιρός κάποια στιγμή νομίζω ότι δεν ξανά τα κάνουμε, γιατί είμαστε έτοιμοι συνέχεια για ένα καλοκαίρι. Μας περιμένει πάντα ένα καλοκαίρι. Και σκέφτομαι τι θα συνέβαινε ποτέ αν η Ελλάδα βαρεχημόνιαζε ξαφνικά. Το εύχομαι, εύχομαι ποτέ να μην συμβεί. Αλλά όλες αυτές οι σκέψεις περνάνε μέσα από το έργο αυτό, αυτή την, το, το stand-up comedy, και κυρίως θα μιλήσουμε για τη σχέση με την οικογένεια, στη σχέση με τη μητέρα, στη σχέση με τον πατέρα, και θα κάνουμε και έναν αυτοσχεδιασμό που τον δοκιμάσαμε σε παραστάσεις στην Αθήνα και πραγματικά λειτουργεί καταλυτικά. Και ξαφνικά οι άνθρωποι ενώνονται γιατί νιώθουν τις ιστορίες τους να συμπλέουν, να συνεπάρχουν και να συνοδεύουν τη ζωή μας. Ε, θέλω να ευχαριστήσω πάρα πολύ εσάς και εσάς και όλους σας και ελπίζω να τα αποκριθώ στο stand-up comedy και εύχομαι να περάσουν ωραία εκεί και χαίρομαι πάρα πολύ γιατί στη Μητυλίνη, όπως ξέρετε εσείς θα κάνω και τα γυρίσματα της σειρά μου και είδα ένα μέρος που το αγαπάω ιδιαίτερα και θέλω με αυτή την ευκαιρία να έχω την επαφή να γυρίσω την Μητυλίνη, για να μπορέσω να διαλέξω και τα μέρη των γυρισμάτων. Σας ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Η σειρά είναι, αφορά την αποδόμηση της ελληνικής οικογένειας. Αυτή είναι η σειρά. Είναι πως άνθρωποι συντηρητικοί από τα παιδιά τους αναγκάζονται να, να ενστερνιστούν τα καινούργια πράγματα και να αποδεχτούν πράγματα και αλήθειες που δεν θέλουν να τις δεχτούν. Γιατί οι Έλληνες είμαστε ένας συντηρητικός λαός και μας αρέσει πάρα πολύ να κουμπονόμαστε, αλλά μας αρέσει πάρα πολύ και να γελάμε. Ε, με τα χρόνια και ιδιαίτερα μετά την πανδημία, όπως ξέρετε, απορριθμιστήκαν τα κομπιούτερ μας, δηλαδή είναι σαν να ήμασταν λάπτοπ που φύγαν τα καλώδιά μας. Μέχρι να ξανασυνδεθούν, έχει υπησέρεται ένας πολύ μεγάλος θυμός μεταξύ των ανθρώπων που προσπαθεί να διοχετεύεται στους δρόμους και ακόμα και τα γέλια των ανθρώπων έχουν γίνει λίγο περισσότερο πιο νευρωτικά. Το λέω γιατί εμείς με τις παραστάσεις ακούμε κάθε μέρα τον κόσμο και ακούμε κάθε μέρα την ανάσα του. Πώς βελτιώνεται, πώς αλλάζει, πώς, πώς μέρα με τη μέρα ε, καταλαβαίνει 
πραγματικά την ανάσα του κόσμου. Ε, είναι πάρα πολύ διαφορετικό ένα νευρωτικό γέλιο, ένα χαλαρό γέλιο. Είναι περίεργο ότι η μάσκα με έναν τρόπο φήμωσε και το γέλιο μας, γιατί δεν μπορεί να γελάσει πάρα πολύ άνετα και να, α, να κάνεις ένα τέτοιο. Ε, περιορίζεσαι με έναν τρόπο στο, στη μάσκα σου από κάτω. Ε, και είμαστε ένα λαός που στο κάτω-κάτω έχουμε τα φωνή εντά μας πολύ μεγάλα και μακριά και ο καιρός μας βοηθά γιατί είμαστε έρημα του καιρού. Όσο πιο βόρεια πηγαίνεις, τόσο πιο κλειστά είναι τα στόματα για να μην μπαίνει αέρας μέσα. Και όσο πας προς τις κάτω χώρες, αραβία, απλεθανόνται τα φωνή εντά γιατί πρέπει να πάρεις αέρα. Φεύγει η φωνή. Δεν είναι ώρα να το κάνω αυτό, αλλά λοιπόν, θέλω να πω ότι ε, σε αυτή την ιστορία τέλο πάντων των γονιών θα δούμε ακριβώ και θα νιώσουμε πω ένα συντηρητικό άνθρωπο που είναι από τη Μητυλίνη, που το όνειρό του είναι από τη δική του ιστορία να μπορέσει να κάνει μια βόλτα με την οικογένειά του στη Μητυλίνη όπω έκανε παλιά με τον πατέρα του και που συνέβη κάτι και μετά σταματήσαν τις βόλτες, να μπορέσει να το κάνει με την οικογένειά του. Αυτό ζει στην Αμερική, γίνεται κάτι και έρχεται στη Μητυλίνη, αλλά τα φέρνει έτσι η ζωή που ντρέπεται να βγει με την καινούργια του οικογένεια, με τις καινούργιες σχέσεις των παιδιών του και με ό,τι έχει γίνει στη ζωή τους. Ε, θέλω να δω να ξεπερνιέται αυτό και είμαστε σε μια εποχή που ο καθένας μας πρέπει να ξεπεράσει τον εαυτό του για να μας συναντήσουμε στην επόμενή μας μορφή. Γιατί ο Έλληνας πρέπει να αλλάζει. Ωραίος, φανταστικός όμηρος, ο Πυθαγόρας, όλοι ο Μυριβίλης, όλοι έχουμε τρομερούς συγγραφείς, τρομερά, τρομερά μυαλά στην Ελλάδα και όλοι οι Έλληνες με έναν τρόπο βρίσκουν τον τρόπο να προκόπτουν όπου πηγαίνουν για τον λόγο ότι... Θα σου πω να θα πω μια... Μπορεί ίσως να φταίει ότι είναι και λίγο μακριά από τη μάνα τους, θα πω, και μπορούν να... <laughs> να δείξουν μεγαλύτερη... μεγαλύτερο θάρρος στη ζωή. Αλλά, εν πάση περιπτώσει, για οποιοδήποτε λόγο, οι Έλληνες έχουν την δύναμη να προσδιορίζουν τον εαυτό τους στις δύσκολες καταστάσεις. Έχουμε μέσα μας καταπιεί τον Οδυσσέα. Τον έχουμε καταπιεί καλά, τον Οδυσσέα. Και ο καθένας, αν κοιτάξει τη ζωή του, θα δει και τους λαστριγόνες και τους κύκλοπες και όλους. Είναι όλα μας στη ζωή μας και αυτή η σειρά στη Μητυλίνη θέλω να δώσω τη δυνατότητα στους Έλληνες να δουν μια ωραία κομμωδία αλλά που πραγματικά να τους απελευθερώσει και να περάσουν στο επόμενο βήμα της α, σκέψης τους. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Να είστε καλά. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. I'm a huge fan. I just wanted to say that. Okay. So thank you all for being part to this journey. Tonight has been truly fantastic, and I'm filled with excitement of what is lies ahead. Let's continue our collaborative efforts to make a meaningful impact in our communities. Join us in HIOS from August 28th to September the 6th for the third HIOS Medieval Festival, an event not to be missed. Let's join back our band, Rebetico. Thank you all. Κοντά μα έχουμε την αγαπημένη όλων θεσιογνωμία, κύριο Λάκη Λαζόπουλο. Κύριε Λαζόπουλο, καλώ ήρθατε στο Λονδίνο. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ που είστε κοντά μα. Ευχαριστώ και εγώ πάρα πολύ και ευχαριστώ και την περιφέρεια, τη Μιτιλίνη, τη Λέσβο. Πείτε μα, κύριε Λαζόπουλο. Και δεν θα πάω. Στοιχείο βέβαια, αλλά είναι φεστιβάλ με τη Λίνηση, ε, Λέσβο και Υγείο. 
βεβαίω. Πείτε μα δύο λόγια για την παρουσία σα, την απόψινη εκδήλωση. Η απόψη παρουσία μου ήταν ακριβώ για να πω ότι θα είμαι. Γιατί πρώτη φορά συμμετέχω στο φεστιβάλ αυτό και ήθελα και να γνωρίσω και του ανθρώπου εδώ. Και δεν έχω ποτέ παρουσιαστεί στο Λονδίνο, ούτε σε μία εκδήλωση, μια, μόνο μια παράση έχουμε έρθει. Αλλά ήθελα πάρα πολύ να γνωρίσω αυτόν τον κόσμο, αυτού του Έλληνε, του Έλληνε που ζουν εδώ, που μεγαλουργούν εδώ. Πώ σα φάνηκαν οι άνθρωποι που εισπράξατε σήμερα, ε, Είναι άνθρωποι που κρατάνε το γυαλιό μέσα του, αλλά του έχω γνωρίσει κατηδίαν, οπότε ξέρω πώ ανοίγονται. Εδώ σε αυτές τις εκδηλώσεις πάντα λίγο κουμπονόμαστε. Ε, δεν είναι εύκολο να τους ανοίξει την καρδιά, είναι εύκολο να τους μιλήσεις. Αν μιλάς κατευθείαν στην καρδιά τους, νομίζω ότι όλοι οι άνθρωποι σε ακούν. Είπατε πριν ότι το γέλιο μας προκαλεί ενοχέ κάποιες φορές. Ναι, πολλές. Ωστόσο εμείς όταν βλέπουμε εσά, γελάμε με την καρδιά μας. Πώς γίνεται αυτό. Ναι, αλλά εγώ το έκανα κάθε τρίτη, δεν το έκανα κάθε Παρασκευή. Την Παρασκευή πάντα την είχαμε... Με, με το φόβο. Φαντάζομαι και εσύ μεγάλος θες, μη γελάς. Παρασκευή είναι... Γενικά υπήρχε μία μέρα που δεν έπρεπε να γελάμε. Ενώ δεν υπάρχει καμία μέρα που να μην μπορούμε να κλαίμε. Άρα σημαίνει ότι το γέλιο από την αρχή είναι σαν απαγορευμένο. Και γενικά, ε, πώς θα πω ρε παιδί μου, μεγαλώσαμε με αυτές τις, τις τιμωρίες, τις τιμωρητικές μεθόδους που με έναν τρόπο στην Ελλάδα αρέσκονται πάρα πολύ το ξυλογείο του Μαράδεισο, ο Έλληνας χρειάζεται βούρδουλα. Ε, γενικά υπάρχει μια κακή ψυχολογία, να το πω, ή πολύ κακή δεν ξέρω πώς να το πω, που θέλει να συνδέσει τη ζωή μας με κάτι ότι κάπως ο, άνθρωπο, ο Έλληνας συνετίζεται με λίγο με βία, να το πω έτσι. Και νομίζω ότι είμαστε σε μια εποχή που πρέπει να νικήσουμε αυτά τα χρόνια. Δεν θα τα πω στερεότυπα, θα το πω έτσι της εποχής, της παλιάς εποχής που θέλω να συγκρατούν ίσως τους ανθρώπους. Νομίζω ότι είναι η εποχή πλέον έχει φύγει και είναι καλό να αποχαιρετήσουμε τους παλιούς μας ωραίους τρόπους και να πάμε στους καινούργιους. Επίσης είπατε πριν ότι εμείς οι Έλληνες έχουμε συνηθίσει να βλέπουμε τη θάλασσα. Ναι. Τι, θα, τι μήνυμα θα δίνατε στους Έλληνες εδώ του Λονδίνου που δεν βλέπουμε τη θάλασσα δυστυχώ κάθε μέρα. Εγώ πιστεύω ότι οι Έλληνες του Λονδίνου τη βλέπουν πιο πολύ τη θάλασσα. Τη βλέπουν γιατί δεν είναι τυχαίο ότι ασχολούνται με τα πλοία, <laughs> διασχολούνται με, το, με τη θάλασσα. Είναι στην Αγγλία και ασχολούνται με τη θάλασσα. Οι Έλληνες βλέπουν τη θάλασσα. Όλη η Ελλάδα βλέπει τη θάλασσα. Βλέπουμε θάλασσα. Βλέπουμε τη φυγή μας εκεί. Και έχουμε μάθει σαν λαός να, είμαστε, να κοιτάμε αλήθεια έξω. Δεν είναι ένας λαός που κοιτάει απ' έξω μέσα. Κοιτάμε από μέσα μας έξω. Ενώ στις βόρειες χώρες Κοιτάνε όλοι να μπουν σε ένα μέρο. Σήμερα έλεγα ας πούμε, πάμε σε ένα μουσείο καταπληκτικό. Και είναι πάρα πολύ ωραίο χτισμένο. Αλλά γιατί, για το λόγο ότι θέλουν να μπουν σε ένα ωραίο μέρο μέσα. Οι Έλληνε θέλουν να πάνε σε ένα ωραίο μέρο έξω. Και η ζωή μα είναι έξω. Και πρέπει να επανέλθει έξω και να μην την δεσμεύουμε με πράγματα τα οποία θρουρούν τον εαυτό μα. Δεν πρέπει να βάζουμε σκοπιά στου εαυτού μα. Αυτή ήταν να είμαι εδώ να το πω έτσι με, τα, με χαρά αυτό. Μας ταξιδεύετε με τα λόγια σας και ήθελα μια τελευταία ερώτηση. Οι προετοιμασίες για το φεστιβάλ έχουν ξεκινήσει. Τι. Οι προετοιμασίες για το Όχι, φεστιβάλ. Όχι, δεν χρειάζεται Είτε... προετοιμασία. Ούτε καν το λόγο μου δεν προετοιμασία. Ήθελα να δω τι γίνεται και να μιλήσω έτσι από καρδιάς. Βέβαια τα ξέρω τα, τα κείμενα που θα πω, αλλά ο αυτός σχεδιασμός μου είναι πιο καλό, λειτουργώ πιο σωστά κάθε φορά με το Κοινό. Ένα ξεχωριστό κοινό σου δίνει άλλε. Μπορεί να βλέπει ένα, ένα πρόσωπο από κάτω που να σε εμπνέει για κάτι. Και αυτό το πρόσωπο δεν θα το δει σε μια άλλη παράσταση. Θα το δει εκεί. Εγώ θέλω με τα υλικά που κάθε μέρο, όπω ε, φτιάξει ένα φαγητό σε ένα μέρο και παίρνει την ντομάτα από τον κήπο, 
έτσι πες και έναν άνθρωπο από το περιβάλλον του και μαζί του χτίζεις αυτό που φτιάχνεις. Αυτό, το, αυτό που θα κάνουμε είναι ένα κομμάτι ξέρουμε τι θα πούμε και άλλο κομμάτι θα το βρούμε μαζί με τους ανθρώπους. Και αυτό είναι το ωραίο. Το σίγουρο είναι ότι εμείς ταξιδέψαμε απόψε μαζί σας. Σας ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ. Μα λείπετε πάρα πολύ από την τηλεόραση και αναμένουμε να σας βλέπουμε ακόμα περισσότερο. Να σε καλά. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Και εμείς. Κόλα μας έχουμε τη διάσημη συγγραφέα, κυρία Βικτώρια Χίσλοπ. Κυρία Χίσλοπ, καλησπέρα σας. Καλησπέρα. Πείτε μας δύο λόγια για τη συμμετοχή σας σήμερα εδώ στην εκδήλωση. Ε, έχω τώρα πρόσκληση να πάω στην Χίο το Σεπτέμβριο για το φεστιβάλ και σήμερα το βράδυ ε, έχουμε κάνει παρουσιάσεις για το Χίο και για το, για το Λέσβο και είμαι πάρα πολύ ενθουσιασμένη. Θα είναι η πρώτη φορά για μένα στην Είναι η πρώτη φορά που πάτε στοιχείο. Ναι. Και είναι χρόνια που ήθελα να πάω, αλλά έχει πολλά πολλά νησιά και γενικά ε, έχω μια, ένα συγκεκριμένο λόγο να πάω κάπου. Και τώρα έχω ένα λόγο, έχω την πρόσκληση από ε, κυρία Μουτζούρη να πάω. Και έχω πολλά πράγματα που με ενδιαφέρουν για, για την Χίο. Όχι μόνο η μαστίχα, αλλά την ιστορία ε, του 1822, που είναι λίγο μυστικό. Δεν έχω διαβάσει πάρα πολύ, αλλά θέλω να καταλάβω τι έγινε. Και έχει ένα, στο, στο παρελθόν ένα νοσοκομείο για τους λέπρους και έχω δει πολλές φωτογραφίες α, για αυτό το μέρος. Και αυτό μας θυμίζει και λίγο το βιβλίο σας, σωστά. Ναι, γιατί η, η Σπίνα Λόγκα και το νοσοκομείο στην Χίο ήταν εκεί στην, στα, στα ίδια χρόνια και ναι, θέλω πάρα πολύ να πάω. Και... Θα πάω με πολλή ενέργεια, γιατί νομίζω ότι θα τρέξω συνέχεια να δω όλα που έχει. Η αγάπη σας για την Ελλάδα τη γνωρίζουμε όλοι και είναι εξαιρετική. Σήμερα πώς σας φάνηκε ο κόσμος εδώ? <laughs> Πάντα οι Έλληνες είναι... έχουν πολύ ενθουσιασμένο για... για όλα που έχουν στην Ελλάδα. Και... Πολλές φορές σκέφτομαι γιατί οι Έλληνες είναι στο Λονδίνο που είναι τώρα, είναι σχεδόν Μάιο, είναι 24 Απρίλιο και ακόμα έχουμε ρούχα για το χειμώνα και σκέφτομαι αν ήμουν Ελληνίδα θα έμεινα εκεί, αλλά ξέρω ότι έχει δουλειά στο Λονδίνο που Κάνουν όλοι που είναι εδώ και... Εσείς που θεωρείστε εν μέρη Ελληνίδα, ναι, θα είμαι. μένατε ποτέ εκεί όμως. Είμαι μισ, μισή Ελληνίδα και μισή Αγγλίδα τώρα, γιατί έχω δύο διαπαιτήρια. Ναι, σωστά. Λοιπόν, τώρα είμαι μισό μισό. Θα μένατε στην Ελλάδα. Uh, θα πάω σε μερικές μέρες για το Πάσχα, γιατί πρέπει να πάω, θέλω να πάω για αυτό και θα είμαι εκεί για δέκα μέρες και νομίζω στο το τέλος του Μάιου θα πάω και ξανά. Και Οι προετοιμασίες για το φεστιβάλ έχουν ξεκινήσει? Ε, όχι ακόμα, αλλά θα σκεφτώ τώρα που έχω μάθει πιο πολύ για την Χίο θα μπορώ να ετοιμάσω. Σήμερα δοκιμάσατε από τα καλούδια που είχαμε στο Α, τραπέζι. Ναι, 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 έχω δοκιμάσει τυρί, ελιές και ένα χυμό από μανταρίν, μανταρίνια που ήταν από την Χίο, που ήταν νοσ, πολύ νόστιμο. Ναι. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ Σας και ευχόμαστε καλή συνέχεια. Επίση. Τώρα μας έχουμε τη σκηνοθέτη της ταινίας η Φούνησα, κυρία Εύα Νάθενα. Κύριε Νάθενα, καλησπέρα σας. Καλησπέρα. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ για την παρουσία σας. Σας ευχαριστώ και εγώ. Είμαι πραγματικά συγγεννημένη απόψε. Γιατί όποτε βλέπουμε Έλληνες να προσπαθούν τόσο πολύ για την Ελλάδα, 
συγκινούμαστε όλοι. Αυτό άλλωστε κάνουμε και εμεί όσο μπορούμε με την τέχνη μα πάντα. Πείτε μα δύο λόγια για την παρουσία σα εδώ απόψε. Ε, η παρουσία μου εδώ έχει να κάνει με την προβολή της ταινία στο επόμενο φεστιβάλ της Χίου, τον επόμενο Σεπτέμβρη, ε, όπου δεν θα παίξουμε απλά τη φόνηση, αλλά θα προσπαθήσουμε να κάνουμε και μία κουβέντα, μία συζήτηση, ένα τραπέζι που ελπίζω να απαρτίζεται από λόγιους και σημαντικούς ανθρώπους από την Εταιρεία Παπαδιαμαντικών Σπουδών, από ανθρώπους που έχουν σχετιστεί και εγωιτευτεί με τη γλώσσα και το έργο του Παπαδιαμάντη, όπως άλλωστε και εγώ. Και για δέκα ολόκληρα χρόνια μελέτησα πολύ βαθιά και πιστά. Και στη συνέχεια για άλλα τρία χρόνια μαζί με συνεργάτες υπέροχους για την προετοιμασία πια και τα κυρίσματα αυτής της ταινία. Και τώρα έχουμε ευτυχήσει να τη βλέπουμε να ταξιδεύει και στο εξωτερικό. Και είμαι μεταξύ ταξιδιών διαφόρων. Ε, και έκανα μια στάση και εδώ για να μιλήσουμε για την προβολή της σε αυτό το υπέροχο φεστιβάλ στοιχείο. Στη στάση σας εδώ πώς σας φάνηκε ο κόσμος. Ο κόσμο είναι ιδιαίτερα φιλικό, θέλει πολύ να δει την ταινία. Όλοι έχουμε μνήμε από ένα διάβασμα, μια ανάγνωση του Παπαδιαμάντη στο σχολείο. Μόνο που η αυτή η ταινία αναλαμβάνει 120 χρόνια μετά από τη συγγραφή αυτού του έργου να μα φανερώσει ακόμα περισσότερο τι έκρυψε και τι φανέρωσε ο Παπαδιαμάντη, αποκαλύπτοντα ένα βαθιά κρυμμένο μυστικό μια ελληνική διστοπική πραγματικότητα. Ο κόσμο συνδέεται πολύ και ειδικά τα νέα παιδιά συνδέονται πολύ. Και αυτό σημαίνει ότι έχουμε ελπίδα, γιατί μιλάει σαφώς η ταινία για το διαγενειακό μας τραύμα, αυτό της υποτίμησης της γυναίκας και πολλών άλλων πραγμάτων που έφερε στη συνέχεια. Και με έναν τρόπο βγάζοντας στο φως όλο αυτό, το βαθιά κρυμμένο μυστικό, οι νέοι άνθρωποι το αναλαμβάνουν με, τέτοια, με το έτοιο αίσθημα ευθύνη και με τέτοια ανάγκη να το βγάλουμε όλοι μαζί στο φως προκειμένου να το επιλύσουμε, να το θεραπεύσουμε, να το εξαγνίσουμε, που είναι πραγματικά συγκινητικό. Θέλετε να στείλετε και ένα μήνυμα σε όλους αυτούς τους Έλληνες της Αγγλίας. Φυσικά, θέλω να στείλω το μήνυμα ότι ελπίζω σύντομα η ταινία να έρθει και να κάνει μια πρεμιέρα όπως της αξίζει εδώ. Ήδη έχω προτάσεις από ανθρώπους που δεν τους ήξερα μέχρι χτε ότι θέλουν να βοηθήσουν σε αυτό το ταξίδι της ταινία εδώ. Ε, και πάντα συγκινούμε βαθιά. Ε, ένας άνθρωπος να θέλει να δει την ταινία είναι ιδιαίτερη τιμή, πόσο μάλλον όλοι αυτοί που από χτες γνωρίζω εδώ και λαμβάνω τα καλά τους λόγια. Τους ευχαριστώ πραγματικά. Και εμείς σας ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ. Καλή συνέχεια. Να είστε καλά, ευχαριστώ. Κοντά μα έχουμε τον Περιφερειάρχη Μπορείου Αιγαίου, κύριο Κώστα Μουτζούρη. Κύριε Μουτζούρη, καλώ ήρθατε στο Λονδίνο. Ευχαριστώ, καλώ σα βρήκα. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ για την παρουσία σα εδώ. Πείτε μα δύο λόγια για αυτή την εκδήλωση. Κοιτάξτε, ήταν μια εκδήλωση που οργάνωσε η Περιφέρεια Βορείου Αιγαίου στο Λονδίνο, στην καρδιά τη Ευρώπη, για να προωθούν τα νησιά από κάθε άποψη, μια που είχαν συνδεθεί παλιότερα με μνήμε κακέ, τι μόρια κτλ. Έχουμε αλλάξει σελίδα, προχωράμε μπροστά. Βλέπουμε το μέλλον με αισιοδοξία και θέλαμε να τα πούμε εδώ αυτά στο Λονδίνο. Φέραμε όλες αυτές τις προσωπικότητες, ήρθαν πάρα πολύ από το Λονδίνο και είμαστε χαρούμενοι με αυτά που έγινε. Τον κόσμο σήμερα πώς τον είδατε εδώ. Χτυπάει δυνατά η καρδιά του ελληνισμού. Χτυπάει και θα χτυπάει για πάντα, χτυπάει 3.000 χρόνια, θα χτυπάει άλλε 3.000 χρόνια. Πείτε μα και δύο λόγια, είχαμε και φαγητά να πούμε, είχαμε ποτά είχαμε στα τραπέζια. Φέρει... Είχαμε φέρει από τα νησιά του Αιγαίου διάφορα τρόφιμα και ποτά, τα οποία θελήσαμε να τα προσφέρουμε, ώστε να δουν τις ποιότητές τους, μια από αυτά τα νησιά προσφέρονται ιδιαίτερα για γαστρονομία. Τέλεια. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα Εγώ πολύ. Ευχαριστώ.